Uh, we go now to Dr. Ami Berra of California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you, Dr. Shah, for um, your testimony. It is good to see you here again. Um, also, thank you for your leadership um, in transitioning USAID from just being a, a, a donor organization to one that is actually a capacity building organization. Um, you know, India is a good example of a, a country that we built capacity and now they can actually donate and um, help develop countries in, in Africa and other places. Um, as has been mentioned before, you know, when we look at our overall budget, um, we are spending less than 1 percent of the Federal budget on, on foreign aid, so we should keep that in perspective. We also know that these are remarkably important um, investments that not only ex extend the goodwill of the American people uh, globally, but also um, have dramatic impact on, on health and relief of human suffering um, and as a reflection of our values as Americans. Um, I specifically want to focus in on the $8.1 billion um, USAID and the State Department allocate for the global health programs, in particularly um, the $538 million in family planning and reproductive health. Um, as you have already mentioned, USAID has a major focus on maternal and child health in 24 countries where m more than 70 percent of the maternal child deaths occur. Um, you know, quoting another senator, um, former senator, or another physician, former senator Bill Frist, um, he talked about family planning as being a key, often hidden engine for additional global health achievements. He also noticed, noted that when women space their pregnancies out, by more than three years through the use of voluntary family planning, they are more likely to survive pregnancy and childbirth. Their children are more than twice as likely to survive infancy. And as doctors, we know that pregnancy spacing is incredibly important. We also know that research um, has shown that addressing the current unmet need for modern contraception, um, if we were able to meet that need, that we would prevent 79,000 maternal deaths and over 1.1 million infant deaths. You know, from your perspective, how is USAID ensuring that we better support effective family planning tools to advance our shared goal of ending preventive child and maternal deaths? Uh, well, thank you, Congressman. Thank you for your leadership on, on these issues and global health in particular. Uh, we, we do have a significant proposed investment in family planning and voluntary family planning. Uh, this has been a part of America's global health and foreign assistance legacy for now more than four decades. Uh, and it has been extraordinarily successful in bringing down, in, in taking up the contraceptive prevalence rate and bringing down the total fertility rate in country after country. One of the biggest successes of the program is uh, most of the programs transition to country ownership, management, funding, and implementation after uh, ca the capacity is built, as you point out, over years. Uh, President Obama has been very committed to this issue, increasing budgets relative to the prior administration significantly. And we have a very careful process to ensure that everything we do follows the very strict letters of the law. There, I think there are just three things I would highlight, as you point out. One is this is one of the most effective ways to save women's lives during childbirth and most cost effective way to do that. The second is we don't save, we don't achieve the end of preventable child death unless we make these investments. And the third is the demographic shift that comes with bringing down child death and bringing up uh, voluntary family planning together is what gives countries the capacity to be more stabilized from a population perspective and then to grow their economy. And all of these things have been proven, which is why we have engaged in this administration in a partnership with the private sector, with Australia, the U.K., with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to get others to do more with us uh, in genuine partnership. Great. Um, you know, playing off of a hearing that we had last week about empowering um, girls and, and women, and particularly on the education front, we know, uh, as we are prone to say in, in our own country domestically, when, when women succeed, you know, societies succeed. And I would like you, in, in the remaining um, few seconds, just to comment on some of the strategies that USAID is um, engaging in. Well, Thank you. And I think we put out a new women and gender policy a few years ago. We uh, now really take a pretty aggressive approach. We have a new gender coordinator coming on board. 
And we have really restructured the way we do this work so that we support the National Action Plan on, on Women, Peace and Security. And critically important in all of our major programs, we try to measure whether the benefits of our efforts are reaching women. So in the Feed the Future program, which works to reach 7 million farm households, we actually measure are the income improvements that come from better agricultural production on farm going to women. And the reason that is important is they do most of the work. And, uh, and you know that a dollar of additional income for a woman in that context is far more effective at getting kids into school, reducing child death rates and improving community development outcomes uh, than if that same dollar goes to a, a male. So by measuring and reporting on those uh, trends, we have actually helped to lead this on this issue, not just for our own foreign assistance, but in the community of our partner country uh, agencies. The gentleman's time has expired.